What's good, people? Welcome to another episode of my channel. It's your boy, Elijah. And today, like the title says, I'm going to be showing you how I managed to drain $10,000 from my Robinhood's account through options trading. <laughs> Now more than ever, everyone is posting their wins and their gains on different stocks. So from GameStop to AMC and the rest of the meme stocks. Um, but what we don't typically see is the other side of that spectrum and what it looks like. So today I kind of wanted to go into a little bit of transparency and kind of share my story. Um, so I got into options trading very recently in December 2020. And since then, I have lost almost $10,000. So. So I'm logged into Robinhood here, and this is my current position as of today. But really quick, I want to walk you through what has happened so far um, through my journey of trading options. So as you can see here, we're going to go to all, all time. So right around December um, is when I started getting a position, as you can see here. Um, and then in January, I kind of started off... Um, with a, with a loss, as you can see, um, dipping down to losing like $2,000 in my portfolio. And then from there, um, that's when things kind of turned around really, really well for me. Um, and it ended up going right around $10,000. And this was the highest moment. I was very excited. I was like, options is amazing. I was so excited about options because the possibilities of growing a portfolio from, you know, $5,000 towards $10,000 in a matter of, you know, weeks, weeks is very very impressive it was like two weeks of um you know doubling my port like my position so i was very excited about options and you know the sky was the limit when it came to this and then after that <laughs> it all came crashing down and and here's the thing about um trading options with, especially without a stop loss um when you when you lose and it dips this far you're thinking okay maybe it's maybe it's like bouncing back maybe it's starting to turn around but then you don't realize what's going on um, until you, you keep getting hit. And, you know, when you keep staying, hoping that the market turns around, you know, it's going to blindside you and it's going to continue to, you know, fail you. So that's what has kind of happened. I'll talk a little bit more about what I've learned in a little bit. But first, I want to go into um, what my trades were during this period of time. So we're going to start off with very, very earlier on. I came into the position of Square. So I bought a Square contract um, that expired um, sometime around, I want to say, yeah, February 26th. So options, the difference between options and regular stocks is options expire. It's like a gamble. Um, so you're betting in the stock market in a sense. So well, I'll talk a little bit more about options later, but this video is going to be focused on my losses. So I bought this contract. Um, my beginning position and then it was doing really well um, like I was saying when the market was going up so I you know I doubled down I put more money into it um, and then I bought another contract and eliminate um, with a strike price of 120 um, that was gonna expire March 5th um, so these dates have already passed already so they've all expired um, so I'm gonna walk you back to my square contract so this was the very, very um, high peak time of my, you know, trading um, in the market. So that $3,000 contract, I was able to sell back for $5,000. So I made $2,000 in profit. And that was really, really amazing. I loved it. And then, you know, moving on, I was like, okay, I'm going to ride this wave. I was very confident. I was very excited about options. And then, you know, I went into a contract at Open Door buying two contracts, um, at value of three thousand two hundred dollars so from there that's where things started to turn in the opposite direction so I bought another square contract riding the market and it was sitting at um, 267 uh, 50 I bought this contract this is one of the contracts I'm not happy about um, as well it didn't end up turning out good for me so when you look here again um, you know, I bought another open door. Uh, I sold my open door contract here to kind of close that position. And if you can see back here, I bought it at $3,200 and I ended up selling back at, you know, 1820 So that was one where I was like, ugh. So I left that position to join this position. 
um, and talents here, which is my current position right now. Um, but I don't want to confuse um, you too much. So here's the here's the part where things start going bad. So that first strike, um, that first option I bought in Square, um, sitting at two sixty seven right here, you know, expired. So it was worthless, completely worthless. Ended up at zero. Um, so that was very annoying. Um, and then we have here again the other lemonade contract I bought at four thousand three hundred dollars also expired and went back to zero dollars so um, that kind of sums up my you know experience so far um, so if we're gonna jump back to my you know current position today we're sitting at two thousand one ninety seven and I have uh, you know an, an, a contract in Palantir I'll talk more about this company later in a different video um, but for now this is my current position because I believe it is sitting at fair value. Um, I bought in under $24 and Palantir um, as a company overall, I think is you know fairly valued at around $24. Um, overall, they've seen higher um, higher than $24 obviously, but you know with the entire market sell off in tech uh, because of the bond yields going up, you know things turned around for the tech stocks and growth stocks especially. So we're, I'm hoping things kind of turn around by, you know, April uh, 16th, so I can kind of regain um, some foothold. So I'll keep you updated on if I'm able to make some of this back. But right now it feels like I lost ten thousand dollars, and you know I I could have probably lost a little, way less than that, way way less than that. But I was um, I was trading emotionally and not logically. So one of the mistakes I made was not having a stop loss. So um, after the market kept going down, I like after 30%, 40% loss, I should have just cut ties and moved on, um, you know, accepted my losses and moved on, you know, with, with, the, with room to fight another day, with a little bit more money to like, you know, trade another um, contract or invest in something else. But, you know, I put all my cards in, into one, all my eggs in one basket, um, hoping the market would turn around and my investment would turn around in that. And it didn't end up turning around. So... Um, you know, one thing I would advise is if you're going to be trading options, which I, you know, don't trade a lot of your, you know, your money, I would say maybe 10% of whatever you are willing to invest. But if you do trade it, have a stop loss. If it goes past that point, don't get too attached to it. Don't think about what, whether or not it turns around, just sell out. Um, if it's like, if it doesn't work out, sell out at the stop loss, move on to a better investment. It's going to save you time, headache stress and all of those things combined so just walk away if you're you know in a position to walk away so that's my kind of two cents on the, on the topic but outside of that realm uh, i do want to say trading options is definitely you know it's very huge um it can get, it's very rushing it's like thrilling you get to make a lot of money really quickly but you could also lose a lot of money really quickly um and i i at first i felt really like you know, a way detached from losing that money because, um, you know, like I said, like when, when this dip happened, I was able to recover. Um, so, you know, at some point I, I believe, you know, my portfolio is definitely going to bounce back because if it's, if it was possible here, it's possible here again. So, um, I'm just now I'm going to be approaching it with a different mindset. So with a stop loss and a profit, um, exit, the second thing I forgot to mention, actually exit plan. Having an exit plan, huge. So whenever your profit hits a certain number, you wanna walk away. Um, you don't wanna to stay too long, you wanna walk away. So with my lemonade option, actually, I was up $1,000 before it expired worthless. I was up $1,000 right around here. Um, instead of selling, I kept hoping for more, and that's one more thing, emotion and greed kind of got, took hold of me, and then I kept waiting, you know, hoping it would go higher and higher and higher so I could make more money. But here's what you need, an exit plan. So set a number, set a goal before you buy the, the option or a contract. Let yourself know, okay, once it hits this you know, milestone, I'm going to sell out and you know, take my profits and move on and cut ties with it. Because there's a lot of uncertainty, especially in the short term. You never know what's really going to happen. And this, like, this bond yield going up and the tech stocks falling, I didn't see that coming. Uh, maybe somebody did. You know, some people do definitely understand more about the market how it moves than i do um, so they most likely saw it coming but i didn't see it coming so you got to trade with your knowledge uh, based off of your knowledge you trade that way don't 
um, I would say don't try to put yourself in someone else's shoes and say, okay, um, if they, you know, like, that person knows that information, I should know it too. Like, I mean, yes, you should try to learn as much as you can, but don't punish yourself for not knowing stuff. Um, people are just in different positions of, you know, knowledge and knowing things and, you know, different nuances in the market. So, you know, moving forward, I do want to say I'm excited to try to turn this around and I will keep you updated on how this goes. This was just a transparent video about trading. I, I don't trade much. I try not to trade, um, but this is something new that I got into, like I said, in December um, 2020. So this was very, very recently. Um, I much prefer long-term investments, especially in value stocks. Um, I talk a lot about you know tech companies that I'm very, very bullish on. So a few of these tech companies I bought options in, but I wouldn't recommend buying options in them. I would say more of a long-term investment uh, because in the short term, there's a lot of volatility and you don't really know uh, what's going to happen. But if you're, if you're long-term um, driven, if you believe in the company, invest in them for the long term, leave the money there, dollar cost average over time, and you're sure to find really, really good returns. Anyways, this is your boy Elijah. I was bringing you a real quick video about how I just threw my money away, pissed it in the toilet. So <laughs> take it how you, you know, how whatever kind of two cents I had in this, um, whatever you kind of find and learn from my mistakes, try not to make the same mistakes, try to avoid them, um, always have an exit plan, you know, and always have a stop loss so you can walk away, especially with short-term investments. So it was your boy Elijah once again. Thanks for tuning in. I will be bringing you more information on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays about different investments that I'm going into. So stay tuned because I'll be bringing more bangers. See you soon.